concept we'll just start and we'll pick it up again later. And that is, what if we write a line of code like this? What if we say, what if we create a new local variable of type double, and let's call this years as a decimal. So eventually we want to say, okay, it's like 11.3 years. Okay. But let's say we, to get started, before we do this calculation, we assign it to our local variable total seconds, which is not a double, right? It's an, it's, it's an, it's an integer value, right? Um, what does Java do in this case? So what Java does or what this falls under is the idea of a conversion. Okay? So a conversion is when a data value is converted, I hate using the word in the word, um, from one type to another. Here we're focused on primitive types. Right? If we're dealing with class types, we can't convert a turtle to a rectangle. We can't convert a target to a vending machine. Like that, that just doesn't happen. But we can convert between primitive types. So as an example, like what happens if we try to convert an int or assign an int to a double? Or what about assigning a double to an int? Or an int to a long? Okay, those are all examples of conversion. We classify these into two categories. A conversion is either widening, which means it preser preserves information, meaning we, we're not going to lose any part of our value. So for example, if we're converting from an int to a double, every integer value can be represented as a double. Okay. So 3 becomes 3.0, we're all good there. Um, similarly, an int to a long, every integer value can be represented as a long. There's plenty of bits there, there's no problem. That's our widening conversion. If it's not a widening conversion, it's a narrowing conversion. And we use the word lossy. What lossy means is that we may lose information. May may not, but there's a possibility based on the type, not the value, that will lose information. So for example, when we go from a double to an int, we may lose information. If we have a number like 3.14 and we force it to be an int, the 0.14 goes away. We've lost some information. That's a lossy conversion. It's a narrowing conversion. Java does it based on type, not based on value, because at compile time, Java doesn't know what the values are. So sure, we can convert the double 4.0 to the integer value 4 and not lose any data, but that's specific to the value 4.0. That's not true of all double values. Okay? So Java, as a result, is very conservative about this. Java only automatically performs widening conversions. If it's a widening conversion, Java will do it automatically, just like assigning total seconds to years as a decimal. If it's a narrowing conversion, we'll look into that tomorrow in terms of how that's going to happen. This is a good place to pause. So previously, we were focused on conversions. So just to review for a little bit before we write some new code together. Um, we're focused on conversions between different primitive values. So it's when we convert a value of one primitive type to another primitive type. Um, and previously, we defined two types of conversions. We said they, there were narrowing conversions um, and widening conversions. So widening conversions are conversions where 
all information is preserved. Okay, so, so we go from an int to a double. Every integer value can be represented exactly as a double. So that is a widening conversion. An int to a long. Every integer value can be represented as a long. Um, so that is a widening conversion. Java automatically performs widening conversions. Okay? And it does it all the time, and a lot of times we're not even aware of it or not even thinking about it. Narrowing conversions is where because of the types, not the values, but the types, we might lose information. There's a possibility of losing information. For example, going from a double to an int is a narrowing conversion. There might be a fractional part of that double value, and that would be lost if we forced it to be an integer. And so therefore, Java will not automatically do that. But today, we'll learn how we can basically force Java to do that, because there are cases when we want to. So to get started here, um, we assign total seconds to years as a decimal, um, which is a widening conversion, so that's good. Um, and now let's do, so that's, this is an example of Java automatically doing a widening conversion in terms of an assignment, right? So we're assigning, you know, it's okay to assign an int to a double, but not the other way around. Java also does this automatic widening conversions for any other operation, not just the assignment operator, but for the other like mathematical operators as well. So let's do an example of that um, and talk through some of the implications in terms of how Java does this. All right, so let's start here. And let's write a line of code first, and then we're going to like write some notes and commentary on it. So let's declare another local variable, but a constant. So we're going to use that final keyword again. And we want this to be a long, because this number could be large, although we'll, we'll talk more about the specifics. And we're going to basically create a new constant for seconds for every year. So a little bit about where we're headed. We want to do a calculation so that we've, we've already reported, built a string that says average time to crack, and we give them how many years, days, hours, minutes, seconds it would take on average. We, I also want to present the information in a, in a more succinct way. Let's present how many years it's going to take, but include a decimal portion. So we might be, it's going to take 3.47 years on average to crack the cycle. Um, so we're going to do a calculation where years is going to be resulted, but we'll have that decimal portion. So we need a new constant, which is how many seconds are in a year. And an easy way to calculate that is just to multiply all of the constants from up above here. Scrolling up to our constants. All of these constants, which are all int types, we're going to multiply all four of these together. So you're welcome to copy and paste these if you don't want to type them. I don't want to keep scrolling on you, so I'm going to just type them um, as we go. But let's multiply all of these together. So seconds for every minute times minutes for every second multiplied by hours for every day Oops. multiplied by days for every year. And so I know that's 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. Oh, minutes for every hour this should be. I'm sorry. That makes more sense. All right, there's a lot going on here. Let's, let's unpack this. Whenever the Java runtime is going to perform an operation involving two operands, 
it first looks at the types of the values of those two operands. Okay? Because in order for Java to do an operation with two operands, the types of those values have to be the same. And if they're not, Java is going to try to promote one value type to the other type so the types match. Okay? Um, usually this just works out very conveniently for us. We don't even think twice about it, but there are some potential pitfalls. So this concept is called arithmetic promotion. So basically Java promoting a value to a different type in order to perform the arithmetic operation. So if the two operands are of different types, Java attempts to promote one of the operands by doing a widening conversion. And then it performs the operation. And this happens automatically. We don't need to do anything about this. So we're going to use this as an, an example here. Um, here's what I think is most important for us to remember when we're considering this idea of, of arithmetic promotion is the difference between how we think as humans and how the Java runtime thinks as software. Okay? So um, the Java runtime only does one thing at a time. It evaluates one expression at a time. Um, and so we might holistically look at this entire line of code and consider it from that perspective, but Java doesn't do that. Literally, the Java runtime is going to look at just multiplying these two values together without considering anything else on this line of code. And then whatever that resulting value is, it's then going to multiply it by this one without considering anything else on the line of code. And eventually, after all of this stuff is multiplied together and there's a value, only then is Java runtime even aware that we're assigning it to this variable of type 1. Okay. So sometimes we have to put ourselves in the shoes of the Java runtime and just think through like one operation at a time and not look at our code too holistically, or else we fall into to certain pitfalls. So let's look at how this example behaves. So for this line of code that we just wrote, so in this case, let's just focus on this first multiplication operation. And I'm going to copy and paste these because they're long. So in this case, both seconds for every minute and minutes for every hour are ints. So Java doesn't perform, perform any promotion. The types match. Just multiply them together. And instead performs the multiplication and returns returns the result as an int. So an integer value times an integer value, they're both ints, multiply them together, the resulting value is an int. Great. This is what we would expect. This is nothing, on a, I don't think this is anything unexpected. This is consistent with what we've seen so far this year. Um, I think we're okay with it. However, not however, but just next, after all three multiplication operations are performed, then we have some integer value being assigned to this variable of type long. Okay? Now the types don't match. So only after all three multiplications does Java promote the int value of the resulting product to a long and then assigns it to seconds for every year. This is what I mean by the Java runtime doing one thing at a time. Okay? It doesn't like look ahead and, and perform the promotion early 
because it knows, oh, eventually I'm going to assign this to a long. I should start the promotion now. It doesn't work that way. Okay? It just does one thing at a time. In this case, for this code, this behavior is totally fine. Okay? But we need to be aware of how this promotion works because there are cases where this cap, this is important. This is like the pitfall we run into. This promotion may be too late. What I mean by that is if the multiplication overflows an int, the wrong value will be promoted to a long and stored. That's the pitfall we have to watch out for. In this case, the product of those four numbers fits just fine in the mint. We don't have an issue. But if that weren't the case and we actually overflow the int, but we're thinking, oh, it's going to be okay because we assign it to a long. The overflow has already occurred. We've already had the wrong value before we ever promote it to a long. It's not going to work. Okay. So just be aware of, of this. And we'll, we'll do some more examples related to this later today as well. I think this warrants a second example. So let's do another example of arithmetic promotion. So let's write, um, let's finish our calculation. So years is a decimal we initialize to the total seconds. We now have a constant for seconds for every year. So now we can actually update years as decimal equals years as decimal divided by seconds for every year. So now we'll actually end up with the 3.74 years on average to crack the cipher. Now that we have this value, let's add it to our description string that we're going to return from this method. So you may remember that previously we built up this description with this nice, all this stuff related to the average time to crack. Let's just add more stuff to that. DESC plus equals or, and then we'll concatenate years as decimal, years. So another way of sharing this information with the user that might be more understanding. Quick side note, we will go into this in more detail later. The backslash n here is called an escape character. When we have a backslash in a string, it basically means this is going to be something special. The escape characters in Java are the same as the escape characters in Python. That might help you out. Um, what backslash n means is a new line, meaning whatever we next concatenate to the string is going to be printed, well, not printed, but be on a, a new line if we eventually print this to the terminal. So we'll do more with escape characters tomorrow. All right. Let's explore this example, though. That's what we're focused on at the moment. All right, so in this example, the value of seconds for every year is promoted to a double and then floating point division, division is performed and assigned to years as decimal. So again, how does the Java runtime approach this? Hey, I'm going to do a division operation right here. What's the type of the operand on the left? It's a double. What's the type of the operand on the right? It's a long. Or it's, yeah, it's a long. Do they match? No, they're different types. All right, can I promote one of them to the other with a widening conversion? Yeah, we can promote the value for seconds for every year, and then we have two doubles, and we'll do floating point division, which is exactly what, what we want. Here's a common source of confusion that I want to try to proactively address, and that is arithmetic promotion only promotes the values to a different type before it performs the operation. 
it doesn't and cannot change the type of the variable. Okay? So that's really, sometimes that leads to confusion. This is really important to keep in mind. So just like in this case, the local variable seconds for every year, it is still a long and it still has the same value. Okay? That does not, that does not change. Um, we can't change the type of the variable. Basically think of it as this way, the Java runtime copies the value from the variable, promotes that value like off to the side to whatever type it needs to be, um, and then performs the operation. Okay. So that's just a good way to think about that. All right, so there are two examples of arithmetic promotion. In a moment, we'll do a, a couple of peer instruction questions related to that. I think the one unanswered question is, how do we tell Java we want a narrowing conversion to occur and we're okay with that, right? Basically, how do we force Java to do a type conversion? It doesn't necessarily have to be narrowing, but we, we just wanna force Java to convert a value right now. Um, and here's how we do that. This is like our, our last concept here. So to force a conversion, we use what's called the cast operator. The term cast is not specific to Java. It's a general computer science programming term. Um, the textbook has like a formal definition of what a cast is in terms of like forcing the type. Conceptually, here's, here's how I think about it. This is my very informal definition, but I think it captures when we would use it. So a cast is the, I know what I'm doing, trust me, conversion, okay? Basically, when you use the cast operator, you're telling Java, I understand what I'm doing. I understand the risks associated with telling you to force this value to be this other type. I accept responsibility for that <laughs> and it's okay. Right? So Java will never do this stuff automatically. Here's the syntax. Unfortunately, I think the syntax um, is a little bit weird. Uh, the cast operator is a type inside the parentheses. So here's two examples, int 84.69. What this results in is this truncates to an int with a value of 84. Let's do another example. Three point six plus zero point five that entire expression in parentheses, force that to be an int. Order of operations, we do the thing in parentheses first, the expression, so 3.6 plus 0 0.5 is 4.1. We then take that resulting value of 4.1 and truncates 4.1 to an int with a value of four. The cast operator has a really high precedence. Like we're always going to do it first, almost. Um, therefore, if we want to cast the result of some sort of a mathematical operation and expression, we got to put that thing in parentheses. Okay? Here it's just a number, so we don't need the parentheses. Here we definitely need the parentheses because if we were to leave them out, it would cast 3.6 to an integer and then add 0 0.5 to it, which is not working. Right? So we gotta be judicious with our parentheses. All right, um, one thing I wanna be super clear about is that the cast trunk, when we cast to an int, it's truncated. Okay? So if we want to round a double to the nearest integer, nearest integer value. Um, there are methods to help us do this, like a round method. 
Um, but here's a, a simple technique to do it. So one approach is to add 0 0.5 and then cast the result to an integer, which truncates the decimal portion. You could work through some examples and see like why that, that will always work. But basically if we, kind of like the example I did up here, if we add 0.5 and then truncate it, it's the same as rounding the original value. Okay? So how do we round 3.6? Well, if we add 0.5 and we get 4.1 and then truncate it, yeah, it ends up with 4, which is what we want. All right, so let's do an example of this in our actual code. So the following divides, divides years as decimal by 10. We're going to turn it into decades, then rounds the resulting long to an int. So we're just going to, so, you know, again, just to be very communicative to our user of our program, we're going to say, oh, this is like, this is like rounded to the nearest decade, it's like three decades, whatever it happens to be. All right, so what does that code look like? Here's our local variable decades. Here's the cast operator, int in parentheses. And then we're going to first divide years as decimal by 10. After we do that, we'll then add 0 0.5. This is our approach to do the rounding. And then that resulting quantity, we will cast to be an int. We will force to be an integer value. And then we'll update our, our description string to actually say or about so many decades. Let me show you three examples, like in the slides, um, and then we'll we'll discuss. So um, I just want to do a little comparing and contrasting here. So here's a little code snippet that results in um, automatic conversion, arithmetic promotion. Sum is of type double. Count is of type int. The Java runtime looks at this division operation. The left operand is a double. The right operand is an int. They don't match. we got to promote one of them. We can promote the int to a double. Can't go the other way. So let's make the value of count a double, then perform the division, floating point division, and store the value, uh, the resulting value in this variable result. Okay? This probably works the way, the way we expect. Here's the potential pitfall. Okay? Um, I see and sometimes write code like this. Sum is now of type int and count is of type int. I want to do floating point division and I'm going to assign the result to a double variable because I want that, that decimal portion. However, the Java runtime simply first evaluates the division. The left operand is an int, the right operand is an int, and so the Java runtime is like, yep, they're both ints, we're going to do integer division. It does integer division, the fractional part is thrown out, it's truncated, and then, and only then, is that resulting value promoted to a double to be assigned to this variable, but it's too late. We already did integer division. Okay. This snippet of code is like one of the most common bugs that we run into this unit. Not just this unit, just period. Comes up all the time. The code we wrote together focused on using the cast operator to force a double to be an int and to truncate it, and we definitely do that. We also, though, sometimes use the cast operator to force an int to be a double 
to ensure that floating point division occurs. So here's how we could fix this code. We could cast sum to be a double and then divide it by count. The cast operator has really high precedence. So we're first going to take the value of sum, force it to be a double, and then we'll perform the division operation. And since the left operand is now a double and the right is an int, we're going to promote the int to a double and perform floating point division. So this is another very common use of the cast operator.